and a plane, and Superboy, and Supergirl, or Superman. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. And you're listening to Krypton Report. Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and pop. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. It is now time to revisit Superman for All Seasons by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale um, for summer. You know, we have previously done uh, spring when it was spring. And now it's about to be summer. Can you boys believe it? We're back already. And it's time to read summer. Seems like just last week we read spring. <laughs> I'll tell you what's crazy is just the fact that I'm rereading this. And I forgot. It's been a long time since I've read this. Because like I'm like, dang it. Like I was reading it in bed the other night. And I was like, I want to keep reading. And I was like, nope. I have to stop. I'm like, I'm reading this in a certain way. And I have to stop. Um, but we will start with summer. And the one thing, like, I know I mentioned this during spring, that I kind of thought was, I kind of, when looking back and revisiting this, I had forgotten that it takes place over, like, time. You know, with the four seasons and everything, it always kind of felt like it was in a year. Um, but, you know, we have that time jump during spring where Clark leaves and then shows up in Metropolis in another spring. His spring ended um, with Lex Luthor saying it's going to be a long, hot summer. So when we get to uh, summer, it's that summer, but um, we're still not like in the same time as, say, when spring started. That's just one of those things because there is a page later in here where Clark returns to Smallville and... um, there's a reference to Lana being gone for a long time. But, Brian, I know that you've been rereading a lot of Tim Sale and Jeff Loeb. I have. I just reread uh, The Long Halloween yesterday. Um, I'm currently uh, rereading Dark Victory after many, many years. Um, I love this duo. They are one of my favorites of all time. I I can I can understand why. Um I like the art. Um Superman has a unique look in this book. So it's kind of cool. It makes it definitely stand out. But the, the only thing I will say is that I I I like I like Tim's drawing of Batman a little bit better. Oh, I do too. Um, um, because when I when, like I'm looking at this, I think it's on uh, page, yeah, page two of the comic. Um, like Superman just it it, it kind of looks chubby, man. Like just just in like in the face, like the, the face is just kind of he's kind of like chubby. Um, I just, I don't, I don't know how else to put it. Like the rest of the body, like he's muscular, but like, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know how to put what no. the words what I'm trying to say. Like sometimes he looks chubby there. <laughs> they read it. They said it before that they drew him like a, just a corn fed, big farm boy. Is how they, how they portrayed him. Yeah. He's built like an ox, like. Like he's he's built like an ox. Like he's he's so big. Like even as Clark Kent, he can't hide because he's so big. Yeah. Um. <laughs> like it's yeah. It, it, you know he as Clark Kent he slouches and stuff. Um. Mm-hmm. So like his massive neck makes it look like he has no neck when he slouches. As opposed to when he's standing up straight as Superman. So it kind of makes his face look rounder, more chubby, you know? Well, but one thing I do love, though, is I love, 
I love how Tim, um, I love how Tim draws Superman, uh, at his, his super speed. Um, like there's a, there's a panel, there's a panel where Superman, uh, grabs a weapon from somebody and, and Tim just, it's, he just takes like a pastel color and he just smears this red and blue. He's the red blue together. blur. Uh, it's, just, it's it's it, uh, it's it's just it's done so well. Um, I, I just love it. Um, and 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 I just I love Jeff's writing, like how this comic starts off with, you know, this is this is all from Lois's perspective. Um, but I love how she says, "What was it?" Um, I'm trying to get to it. I apologize. Uh, where are we? Page mode, panel mode. Okay. Um, but, but she's talking about you and your about, like, digital. I, I got the physical book in front of me. Yeah, I don't. Um, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. <laughs> sorry, man. Um, uh, we just give each other crap about the digital and physical media. <laughs> I'm, I'm holding my uh, my handy dandy trade paperback that I purchased at half price books for like seven bucks. There you go. Um, but she says she says uh, you know he flies. He can see through walls. He can lift up cars or bounce bullets off his chest. Or do just just about anything he wants to, and that's the part that gets me. Uh, oh crap! And she's like, "That's the part that gets me." He can do anything he wants to, and he decides to do what? He decides to be a hero. Yes. And and she's like, "And we live in a world where nobody sticks their neck out for anybody." I write about it all day long. We lie to each other. We brutalize each other. We kill each other. And here's this man. It's amazing for someone who makes a living using words how often they can fail you. But he sticks his net out for everyone, way, way out. It's almost like he knows if we've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. I just thought that, like, that's just pretty good. Like, Jeff always writes amazingly, but... You know, it makes me kind of think about. It always makes you think about the world today. Like, I think it was there was a debate many years ago. I mean, it's still kind of ongoing debate, like how Superman just isn't relatable. You know how how can we relate to Superman? Um, and here here it is right here. Um, we live in a world where nobody sticks out for anybody. Nobody sticks up for anybody. Nobody. Nobody wants to do anything for anybody. They they don't. They just want to lie to each other, uh, brutalize each other, kill each other, treat people like horrible, horrible people. But here's Superman, despite all this, sticking his neck out for people, taking care of people, showing good to people, and that's just good stuff. It's just you know it's kind of like they, that discussion about, uh, you know old values and people and just, you know, um, friendliness and the nature and how, you know, people are self-absorbed and he's not self-absorbed. And he just, people, it's, it's funny because, you know, it's the way people view the world and the that shapes their view and it just shows that a lot of people have a a pretty sad view, if you think about it, on the world and on life. But I I love this splash page, the two page of just him flying in the city. Um. Yeah. Yeah, the splash pages were pretty nice. Uh, were were really nice. Um, I loved them. Uh, we get get him with the missile. Um, get him catching the missile. Um, get the um, the picture of him in space 
He can see the entire Earth. And then uh, the submarine as he's dragging it out of the water. And then the uh, the double splash of, of um, him and Pa Kent in the field. Just gorgeous artwork. I like, like, you know, the first pages to this is just Lois talking. And, you know, it's all the way up until basically um, we get Lex Luthor who enters where we actually start to get more character dialogue as Superman pulls the sub out and it's great because, you know, it's just we are experiencing Superman through someone else's eyes. And I love like one one of my, so one of my favorite parts is this is where Lois is like being held at gunpoint and Lex comes up and he's like, I'll handle this. I can negotiate with anyone. And before he can, whatever terror, before he can finish terrorist, Superman takes the gun and crushes it. And it's just, I love how just Superman undermines Lex without really meaning to. Well, he doesn't, uh, I get the impression that he doesn't uh, think very highly of Lex. Um, he doesn't. You know, he doesn't think highly of Lex. He doesn't think highly of Lex's crew who's there trying to help. But then, of course, you know, he's like they, um, they're trying to be show-offs and they're trying to, you know, put out this fire, but somebody was going to die inside. And, you know, when Lois and Clark are talking after he's flying her back, um, you know, she states, you know, everybody's looking up to you, but nobody, I mean, nobody talks to Lex Luthor that way. And he's just like, it's about time somebody did. And you're just like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Talk, you know, Lex is so used to just everybody kissing his butt and just bending over backwards. And Superman's like, no. Nope, well, you know, he, he, yeah. He knows that Lex sees himself as better than everybody else. And he, you know, no matter your stature, you know, Superman, he doesn't think himself better than than other people uh, with all the things that he can do. You know, there's no reason that Lex should should feel that he's superior to people. I love the I love the little uh, thing that Lois says that her and Jimmy got bored one day. And they were trying to calculate how much money Lex makes. And they said, well, Lex makes probably about $150 per second. And she, and she said, basically what we, what we uh, came to the conclusion is if Lex saw a $100 bill on the ground, he, 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 would, he wouldn't pick it up because it would be a waste of his time. Like, yeah, like, yeah that was pretty cool. <laughs> Like that's just how Lex lives his life. Like he's just too he's too good for anything. Hundred and fifty dollars a second. <laughs> Hundred fifty dollars a second. Like I didn't even do the math when I was reading it. I, I might do, do the math now. I don't want to do the math. It made it make it make me sad. But <laughs> right. I just like the the fact that she says Jimmy and I got bored. I like seeing like I like when Jimmy's played younger. But he's not too young that they don't actually like having Jimmy around. Like, where he's that kind of annoying child. Like, I like that Jimmy's part of the group. So. I don't like when he it seems like Jimmy's just like a, a child that's following them around. So. Yeah, I never liked that either. You know, I... I, I like I like stories where they show what an asset Jimmy actually is. I, I really appreciate those stories. So what I like is we get this kind of brief intermission of 
when Lex was talking, the sub, Clark taking Lois back to the Daily Planet, or should I say Superman, because then we have him change into Clark, and he comes out, and Lois and him kind of have a little chat, and then we, we see Clark as it goes back into Lois's narrating, and she's talking about women have this idea, man, and no such man exists, and then along comes Superman and screws everything up. And we're seeing Clark, and she's talking about, where does he go? What does he do? Um, and we just see Clark hanging out in his apartment. And then we, then we get him going back to Smallville. And I, I like how she has a line here. Clark has this theory that Superman slips off to some kind of fortress of solitude. This from a man who starts his day off with cornflakes. <laughs> Do you guys get the like the significance of the cornflakes? Um, cornflakes is made of corn, and the Clark's standing in a cornfield at that second. Um, the old Superman, the Adventure of Superman used to do was. Uh, sponsored by Kellogg's, and they used to do commercials where him and Jimmy would have breakfast, and they'd have cornflakes. And you'd have... Ooh, nice. You'd have George Reeves talking about cornflakes. Or whatever other... I, I was so close. Uh, <laughs> it's a really interesting kind of thing where they talk about like on the Superman documentary about how um, Clark and Jimmy waking up and having breakfast together was okay, but the idea of Lois stopping by for breakfast, that was a, that was a big no-no. So, just interesting little, uh... At least she wasn't waking up to have breakfast there. Yeah, I know, I was right? like... You guys can always spin it, but... I like when Clark walks in and Pa says, Can you stay for supper? And he's like, how'd you know it, it was me? He said, mud on city shoes has its own sound. And I know your footsteps anywhere, Clark. And then there's that splash page of them in the cornfield, which is awesome. Because yeah, you could probably feel the thud of him walking across the field from 100 yards away. Big as he is. I'm, I'm watching the uh, cornfield grow rather quickly across uh, the street from me, so... I'm just like, ah. I missed that it. view. <laughs> it's, uh, it's nice. But So we have the, you know, Clark's in Smallville, and it's, it's just kind of neat because we see the way he presents himself. And he goes to Lana's house, find out that Lana uh, is gone, and the preacher's there. He's been tending to the garden and everything of the house. Since Ruth passed on, with Lana gone, it's, it's kind of interesting how the people still take care of each other, and we get little bits of Lois's overarching narrative, and then we run into Pete, and they go back to the soda shop, and it's, you know, much like we saw in spring. I like how we get very little narrative of his time in Smallville. Yes. It's only in the first few pages, then it's gone until he leaves. We have it going on, and then we have him talk to Ma. I was going to talk to Ma. And then it picks back up when he stop, he start, we left stopping the fire which we now meet the Lex, what would you call these guys, like Lex bots? What are they called? Guardians of the city. They're basically like Lexo suits, but they're... Well, yeah, Lex Corps, Guardian of, Guardians of the city. This is uh, Lex Corp's latest attempt to move the spotlight off Superman. Um, I, I like this because I love... I love Superman's attitude here, to be honest with you. 
I just really love how he's just like he's annoyed by all this. Oh yeah, when lives are at stake, it's like you know, if you're not gonna do the job right, get out of the way. Because he comes up so one and we just see the panel of him like, tell your boss and it's just pushed away. And we see um that there's a person inside. And he flies in, gets the person, the woman, you know, puts out part of the fire and flies out, puts her down. She says, bless you. He tells the bots to clear the area and then he puts out the fire. This is a job for Superman. In pretty awesome fashion. Spins really fast and sucks all the oxygen up, which draws the fire out. <laughs> which is awesome. Yep. And then, um, you know, we get a little thing at the bottom. We have Lois talking. And then we get the next page is Lex showing up to the person's home who Clark rescued. And we find out that basically he's her angel and she's extremely obsessed with Superman. She has pictures and clippings and candles. Posters and candles and oh, shirts or pillows or... <laughs> I mean, yeah, look, I don't have candles lit in my basement, okay? I'm not. I was going to say, your shrine is everything but well, that. <laughs> well, they're not, they're, not, they're not lit right now. Yeah, I don't have a, a, a candle vigil at my house for Superman, fellas. Sorry. Oh. oh, see, I thought you lit a candle every time Superman saved somebody. Yeah, I would be burning my house. I thought, <laughs> I thought you were... <laughs> I thought you lit a candle every time Bendis publishes a book. Well, that's just praying it's going to be good. Exactly. <laughs> or, or lighting a candle for you know each good issue just lost. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway. So you still need that uh you still need that goat for that sacrifice? Wow. <laughs> but <laughs> so I mean that you know, that kinda in summer. Um I did like the the uh line we meant I forgot it here. When he's talking to Pa and uh, hold on, I wanna I don't wanna paraphrase it, I actually wanna say the actual line, so hold on. He says, Pa says hot in the city, Clark. Clark says, Air conditioners everywhere, Pa. It's like they don't even notice it's summer. And then <laughs> And then he referenced the dog, you know, Shelby. Says so Shelby's been older, gotten older. Um, so it's just kind of, oh, it's kind of interesting, you know. One of these little continuity things that kind of are fun to play with, like you know, Clark's dog, you know, before crypto, or if it was crypto, or kind of like how they on Smallville they try to play it both ways. Where yeah. It was Shelby, but they also called it crypto. So you could kind of get away with it. But. Yeah, it was just a nice Easter egg, but it was really cool that they had his, his childhood dog um, named Shelby. So, but I, I liked summer. Um, I still prefer spring better, but it was a nice kind of continuation chapter of the story. I did enjoy it. I did enjoy like it being narrated. Um, well, first chapter of Spring was by Pa, wasn't it? By Pa Kent. Yeah. And then this one's by Lois Lane. And then the next one's by Each Lois. one's narrated by somebody else. Yeah. So I'm 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 intrigued just because like I said it's been so long since I've I've read it all. I'm I've forgotten a good bit of it. And for some reason, I remembered spring really strong in my mind. 
but the rest of it I, I remember pieces so it's a good little chapter to revisit for the long hot summer hopefully ahead of us but who knows we'll probably you know ready for snow next week that's how we that's how we do in Ohio yeah I'm saying, I, I think it's very few years that you, that we get snow beyond May, though. It's it's you never know what's going to happen right now. It's the end of time. No, it could literally go for it. Could literally be 40 degrees tomorrow and then 80 degrees the next day. Absolutely. Any final thoughts on the story? Bring anything we missed? Just comments about the structure or anything guys um I, I think we talked about it pretty good my my only uh my only hang up with this with this story um is it would have been really i i would have i would have liked to see you know jeff and uh tim do different takes on some superman villains um when you you know when you get the long Halloween, you get to see kind of like the best of the best yeah. and their and their and their version of the villains. Um, and this, you you know, you just really get Lex and you know this kind of Superman origin story type thing. Um, I I would like to see them do another Superman story in the future and like see their interpretations of Superman villains and stuff. It, it would just be cool. I agree with you on that. Like, it is kind of just, it's a very stripped down story. As whereas, like, the Superman is, or I mean, the Batman is very intricate. Um, I also, I think, my thing is, I feel like summer doesn't quite work as well. In the sense that, if you think about all the, like, spring, when we, when we read spring, what that actually meant. Not just the season, but, like, the the point in someone's life and about growth and maturity and just, you know, the, how you could use the season to kind of tell about Clark's life and where he was going and what he was doing. And that whole angle of, you know, spring rebirth, growth, um, new life and change. And then in summer, it's just kind of like, we're not really drawn to that. Like they don't even have like, I don't know. There could have been some artwork or something that really made you feel like summer, like kids playing outside, playing at the pool, playing in the streets. Like, I mean, just a simple thing of Superman breaking a fire hydrant or something, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Like, I, I just feel like we never really yeah. touched on just using the season for its allegorical uh, yeah. ability, but... Maybe, maybe you know that'll be you know fall is definitely I think in in the uh, I think fall and spring are definitely more they're easier to use in that form. Um, so we'll, we'll see what that has for us in you know a couple months when we when we get, um, when we get to that. Right, um, Brian Jeff Loeb wrote. Um, and it's not Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale together, but Jeff Loeb wrote the um, first 25 issues of Superman, Batman, the 2000s um, stories that uh, begins with Public Enemies. Yes. So, Which is great. But the best of both, he gets to write Batman and Superman. <laughs> but Brian's going to get mad because he doesn't have Tim. No, it's, it's 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 okay. It's all right. Let me ask you guys you this know, real quick. Jeff, do you feel you gravitate yeah. more towards an artist or a writer? <clears throat> uh, different a facets writer. of both. I mean, see, I, I find like I gravitate towards a writer, but I love certain artists. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if there's an artist I really like, but they're doing a book that maybe I don't care about the character or who's writing it. You know, I'm just like, ah, but I still want to see the art, but I, I don't know. I'm more apt to like, Oh, this is written by this person to read it. Cause then I get really bummed when like you have a great writer and the art is not good, but I'll still, 
partake of the story because of the writer. I, I don't know. Right. I'm, I'm just more like. Um, well, uh, I mean, for me, com- the comic books. I mean, they they actually. Um, I prefer that you know both a, a a talented writer and a talented artist and art art style that um that I can uh, gravitate to. Um, there are some that are a little less um uh visually um appealing and that does hurt uh, hurt a story in my opinion so there are writers that i will try and read as much um as much as they've done um but then there are also artists like if a book is being drawn by an artist then i mean it's gonna it's gonna help with the story um I I don't tend to just most books I don't tend to just read the words and 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 glance at the pictures and flip the page um you know I I try and put the story together um the words to the pictures and and what's what's happening in between each frame so um I always tend to take my time going through books taking all of the all of the levels in to, t- to tell the story. So um, I used to do uh, a lot of art myself um, when I was younger drawing. So um, I really love great art and, and I definitely, uh, I gravitate to both. Brian. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of where you guys are. Um, you know, I, of course I, I remember the story more uh, if, it, if it had excellent writing, um, you know, like a Jeff Loeb, a Jeff Johns, George Perez, Mark or Wolfman type thing. Um, like, but there's, there's, there's been times where I've, I've read a book and they've changed an artist mid story. Mm. And I've just, I just stopped reading uh, because the, the art was just pure trash. Like, <laughs> there, uh um, I think it was like Ultimate X Men, um, kind of when they were starting to do like the Phoenix Saga, might have been. Um, they were right in the middle of the story, and they changed the artist to like a heavy. It went from like a really nice art that you know was I mean, it wasn't totally like realistic, but you know what I mean. Like it was, it was more like okay, you know, I can see these people in my head more. Um, and then they switched to like a real heavy, like anime type drawing, but it wasn't even like good anime. It was like cheap anime <laughs> and like barely any faces on the characters. Uh, it just was trash and I just stopped reading it. Um, I just, I couldn't get into it anymore. So I'm kind of in the middle where, you know, it has to be at least tolerable writing. It has to be somewhat good, <laughs> you know? Um, but I don't know. I tend to remember, but if you were to ask me what I remember more, I remember the, the, the writer more than I remember artists. All right. We'll definitely do something soon about, um, you know, art in general. Well, you know, it's like action, um, the current run of action that I forget who the artist was before, but then a handful of issues ago, John Romita Jr. came on the book. Mm-hmm. And, you know, yeah, he's a good artist, obviously. Um, uh, you know, he's he's got so – his work is great, but just it's not my favorite work for Superman. And like the way it was, they switched it at the end during the um, Justice and Doom War. And right in the middle of that, you go from, you know, one art style to another. And his art style really did not go great with all of the um, with all of the fights and and the battles between um the heroes and and Luther's uh, Legion of Doom. I I've I just I didn't find it very appealing. So no, I've I've spoken my 
piece enough times on the show about um, John Romita Jr.'s work. So I don't have to yeah. say anything. But that's going to wrap up, you know, Superman for all seasons, summer. Um, I highly recommend it if you haven't read it. Um, you know, pick it up. It's on DC Universe. Um, read it. Follow along with us. And, you know, until next time. Look up in the sky. Look up in the sky. Okay.